Thank you. Let me again welcome you to the 11th Los Angeles Great Film Festival. I'm Katerina Zachary, I'm Director of Education and Culture here, and I was particularly moved by this beautiful documentary that I made sure that my class watched it. Um, I wanted again to ask you, first of all, welcome you, and then ask you to talk to us about this uh, marvelous feat of honoring a mother um, who now has passed in 2012 and um, documenting all this memories of Greece she brought with her for those 80 years. Um, so how about you talk to us a little bit about this process and the center, her granddaughter, me, your daughter is My daughter. the director who did this My adventure. daughter, yeah. Well, first let me say how, how proud we are, proud to be part of this festival. Uh, we heard about it over the years, and the fact that we're here is, a, is an honor, uh, for, certainly for my daughter who could not be here, unfortunately. So I'm trying to, to represent her as best I can. Uh, well, this film had its origins basically once the book was published. Athena, like so many grandchildren, I don't think really I wouldn't say appreciated, but I don't think she really understood uh, what these poet, what these songs were about. Uh, I grew up with the songs in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, back in the 30s. Um, I was born in 1932, shortly after my mother came here as a young bride. So I, I remembered these songs as a boy, and I liked them. I mean, of course, they were my mother's songs, but I liked them very much. Um, and uh, when I realized also that there was similarity between these songs and the and the, the black spirituals and the uh, hillbilly music, as we used to call it back in Pennsylvania. Um, I, I, I thought someday I want to write these songs down. And when my mother was in her 90s, uh, she started, I, I asked her mother, give me some of these songs. And so she began, and I was shocked as these songs poured out of her. I mean, I was expecting one or two or three that I remember. So when, these, when we finally got the book published, it took about five years. She started, she was 95 then, and by 2008, when the book was published, she was 100. Um, and Athena was really taken aback. She was, I think, I think the expression, they, I was blown away, I think is what they say today. Um, and she was also, uh, also she understood for the first time uh, that her grandmother was not just this little Greek yaya, but that she was, had been a young girl once who had dreams and aspirations which she was never really able to achieve. Uh, and, and she carried that with her, my mother. Uh, my mother was not a bitter woman, uh, and I don't think you saw that in the film, but she, there was anger uh, and, um, and sadness that she had never been able to get the education that she wanted. Uh, of course, many, many Greek women, and not only Greek women, but I think it was typical of, of, of that time, certainly in, uh, in villages in Greece, and, and I'm sure in towns in the United States, and, uh, where young girls were not able to get the education that they wanted. Um, so my mother carried that with her all of her life, and Athena tapped into that. So I think she, what she's trying to say in this film, and I, and, and I think she succeeded, that here is, it, it's, it's really it's a tribute to these women who didn't get a chance, and my mother did get a chance at the end to express herself uh, through these poems that she dictated to me, and, and the poems that she wrote. I mean, she wrote about 20 poems, uh, or dictated, and she was dictating now to me. Keep in mind, everything was dictated. She was not writing anything. She was just telling me. Uh, she was part of that living oral tradition that the Greek villages had until very recently, in many villages in other parts of the world, too. It's not unique to Greece. Um, but it was very, uh, very much a living tradition in Greece until very recently. Um, and there were songs, as my mother said, you know, they had no radio, no telephone, nothing, no books. All they had was their songs, and the songs were for everything. I mean, every, practically everything they did, there was a song for it. Fun songs and sad songs, uh, and each song had a, they'd say, well, this song belongs to Yorgo, or this song belongs to Maria. And in the book, what I tried to do also is, in my footnotes, I try to say that, you know, this song was so-and-so's. And I'll tell a story about the song because usually the songs were, would be accompanied by stories as well. Um, what I wanted to say because um, I, I was really blown away by the right. um, by how she carried this forty songs yeah. with her, and it's her way of keeping alive the memory of Greece. Yes. So maybe in your experience with her, you could 
tell that she was angry that she wasn't interviewed. But actually, what I think is astounding is that she carried this memory of Greece in the host country in America. Yes. And that was very much alive. Yes. And I have to say that really, I was very moved. And when she, when the whole film is kind of dropping up, um, she says she wants to be remembered by having people sing those songs. Yes. And that really reminded me, as well as the last <coughs> song that she had with the uh, end titles, uh, where Homer and Inda are saying that people are like leaves. And they're passed through this world, and you know, it's all temporary. Yeah. And so she had the opportunity to bring, give birth to these poems yeah. through you. So to create that connection with you and her granddaughter, and then coming to Greece and being remembered in this way. So it's her legacy that is left behind. Yeah. And I think you mentioned the oral tradition. It's a tradition that now is written. Yes. Now it's become part of the annals of a Greek American diaspora as well as the Greek nation. So she's really performed a, a beautiful work of art for Greeks around the world. And it's very emotional. Well, it, I, 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 I might get emotional. Excuse <laughs> me hearing you say that. <laughs> Let me hold on a minute because. It's hard for me too. Um, <clears throat> let me catch my breath a minute. Um, when when we started, my mother and I sort of on this thing. It, I mean, we we didn't have in mind, as she said, you know, uh, you, you know, know what are you doing here? And, I, and she did also. Uh, we were talking about publishing. Oh. This, this was for the family. My family meant very much to my mother. It does to most people. Um, but as this thing went on, I I thought to myself, gee, we, this is something that we've got to share. Um, and now in the diaspora, the Greek diaspora in the United States, Canada, Australia, the English-speaking Greek diaspora, uh, which is, a, it's, it's understandable. There's a beautiful poem by Cavafy, I don't know if you know it, the Posidonians, I, don't, I can't quote it, uh, but it, it basically describes what happened 2,000 years ago. And this happens to people when they go to another land and eventually become assimilated, and, they, and all they have really are some memories. Uh, these are these are the the Greek diaspora's memories of of Greece, and and I wanted very much to translate them into English for the for the for the young girls. Yes, exactly. Yes. And I tried. I, I mean, translating <coughs> from any language. I, I I'm, I've been blessed. I speak five languages, um, and each language is beautiful in its own way. Uh, Hold it closer. Oh, um, and, and but to translate is very very difficult, mm -hmm. and, um, and and particularly uh, these folk songs. I mean words like senitia, kaimos, levendis, palikari. These are very difficult words. So I tried as best I could. I, I'm not happy with my translations, and I'm sure somebody's going to come along someday, and I hope they do, uh, and do better ones. But for the time being, they're out there, and they're out there for the English speaking. Greek diaspora, and also for the many people around the world who love folk music uh, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and folk songs. Um, I really do think, and I'm sure the audience here will do the same for this work. So it's not an issue of, you know, is it the correct translation? It's a labor of love. Yeah. Right. And I'm very much moved by the reception she had in Greece. So I wonder if that's my next question. Can you speak about that a little? Because she did make her last trip after 80 years to Greece. Yeah. Hold the mic. Uh, she was, uh, it, it, it was really amazing. Um, as you saw, I mean, whether it was uh, at the Maniterotico Festival, which of course these are her people, and they were absolutely thrilled that this 103 woman was there. But when we went to the city, the, the so-called Anakis Mani, uh, that was an incredible experience. And she wanted to go, and she, and she was very much interested in what was happening in Greece, and very, very, pained by it, but at the same time also, and I think it came through, I mean, she, she was putting it into perspective. Uh, these things have happened to the Greek people time and time again, uh, and uh, the question is, you know, will they, can they get through it? She, she thought they could get through it and would get through it, uh, but the, reason, her, the, the people who, who interacted with her, whether it was the musicians, Lakis Kalkiasu is a very well-known uh, singer in Greece, uh, he was absolutely thrilled. In fact, 
the, a little parenthesis here. The people who my, who my mother remembered were her, her his grandparents. <laughs> it, it was his it was his that, that used to wander the villages when she was a girl. So and he was absolutely thrilled to meet somebody who who knew his who heard his grandfather play uh, back in the turn of the century or whatever it was. But in any case, the reception was good, um, and the president. Unfortunately, they wouldn't let us uh, uh, film in the president's uh, office, which I guess I, I can understand. Uh, we were a bit disappointed because he was he was moved. He was very very moved indeed. Uh, you know, I am very moved, but I don't want to keep the discussion up here. We're not opening up. Yeah. Yeah. So here is the first question. So, and by the way, I'm a Russian Jew German from Chicago, and I was extremely moved by this. So um, three questions. Um, were you surprised, it, her bitterness and anger, and understandable, how the experience of traveling, at least in the film, it seemed, it wiped away that bitterness, and instead she became actively involved in the future of Greece. I thought that was an amazing uh, yeah. Our, journey. Yeah. And, can you talk about, were you surprised by that? Can you talk about how long and how you worked together on the book? And can you talk about how she wrote her own songs? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we want to talk about the arc first. Uh, I don't think initially, I don't think none of us, I don't think, understood what we were getting ourselves into uh, in terms of the trip. I mean, basically, she, she wanted to go back, and that was to go back to the Choryo. And keep in mind, a lot of her focus was on the Choryo, her village. Um, and, but I think as we, when we, when we were in Athens uh, and when she met Kalkias, the singer, uh, and my daughter, my other daughter has a theater uh, in, 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 in Athens called Ethical Illinois. It's, it's one of the top sort of off-Broadway theaters. So, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so Eleni, my other daughter, was the one who brought a lot of young people together. My mother was very stimulated by that. And I think as, and then, of course, we, everybody was talking as, as they had it over the, the economic crisis, and she was very much aware of that. And she was she was worried. I mean, she was concerned about that. And I think as she kept meeting the young people and, and her her own relatives, the, the various relatives we met, um, I, it, it began. I I I'm, I I'm just assuming this. I mean, I, I can't put in mind, but I, in terms of, I think she she. She wanted to leave the songs, but I think she also wanted to leave a sense of hope for Greece, for, for the Greeks. To me, she seems like the grandmother of the nation. Yeah. yeah. And having this broader perspective. Yes, yes. Now, in terms Wait, of, you, no, I didn't finish your, yeah. Now, you wanted to know about the second question. Uh, how long and how you worked together on the book, okay. and also um, how she wrote her own songs okay. that are in the book. Look, uh, as I said, I had this, this idea a long time, and I, I couldn't get to it because of my career of traveling around. So, uh, But she was about 95. We were in Florida visiting Athena when Athena was living in Florida. And one evening, we were, we were talking about it, just as we are now talking about the weather. No, the songs. I mean, tell me some of the songs. That, and she, we started talking about it. And then, uh, my gosh, I mean, one night, I, I, I never, mother, I never heard this one before. Where'd this one come from? And uh, well, John, she said, I, this one I remember. So that, I got to let, let's start writing them down. It took about a year over this, the, the first edition of the book. Right now, we're in the second edition because when the first edition was published in 2008, um, she, that, there were about 230. After the book was published, she continued giving me, two, almost until the time she died, I got another 130 songs uh, out of her, if you will, uh, as well as uh, another 10 or 15 of her own composition. Now, how did she, she basically, she was composing them in her mind. One, one of them, she was sick in the hospital. I went in Harrisburg, in Mechanicsburg, actually, and I went to visit her. She's lying in, the, in, in bed. She wasn't deathly sick, obviously, but she was quite sick. And she started reciting, she started telling me these lines. I said, what, what is this about? Oh, she said, I was just thinking, and I said, I started writing it down as fast as I could. Um, but it was, it was basically just coming out of her. Uh, they were not written, they were just dictated, and, uh, and, I, and I just kept asking her, and then, and then she said, well, you better get them down, because I'm gonna forget them, I'm gonna forget them. So the ones that I managed to get down were the ones that, that survived, but it was basically, um, if you will, in terms of the whole period of time, it was almost, what, about 12 or 13 years of getting them, translating them, and then the second edition, I finally got the second edition out about a, about a month ago. 
Uh, you get it on Amazon. You're a brilliant and wonderful Thank son. Thank you so much. And I wanted to also uh, congratulate your daughter for, for putting it together. I will take one last yeah. question because we need to do yeah. the next program. Yeah. First of all, I want to say that this should have played to a full house. Mm -hmm. It was remarkable, and mm -hmm. they should try to show it again. Don't worry, and, we will. Okay, now your mother only had two years of education from right yes. into the human um, uh, condition or whatever you want to uh, situation. And also, a this speaks to a lot of people, especially in the Greek film, who left families as I did. And I have not been moved by anything like the way I was moved by this and it actually led me back to my own time when I left my family and I examined my feelings about that. I was so moved by it and I think that this should go everywhere. It's a wonderful, wonderful um, mm -hmm. production. And so, shall we ask this question? Yeah. Where is it going then? Ah, good question. I don't know what it is. Athena was trying to get it into uh, uh, the uh, but it didn't get, it wasn't accepted there. Uh, she's, she's tried also in Europe. It'll go to Thessaloniki for sure. Uh, but she wants to, because I'm hearing your reaction, this is so good for us, mm. because we were really concerned whether maybe it was too Greeky a film. No, no. Uh, what I can say, I'm, I'm a professor at the University here in LA, so what we might try uh, is to do a, an event next year and do a screening somewhere in Los Angeles. Yes. Uh, with both the Greek American diaspora, but again, the Jewish diaspora, I think we have a lot in common. Yes. I'll also promote the diaspora. All diasporas. But I wanted to just speak to the fact that, you know, uh, this is closing now, and I don't have too much time yeah. to share this information, but um, please know that we will do the best with this live interviews we'll be sending. Um, I heard uncontrollably when I watched this, and it spoke to me in the same way. And I want to thank you for, for what you've done and for remembering your mother. Well, I also so, have to thank Athena. So, yeah. Without Athena, you would not have seen this film. She worked very, very hard. She was going through a very, very difficult personal time, very difficult, and that she pulled this off. I mean, also shows that she got her grandmother's genes in her. Well, Congratulations, Athena, and thank you all for being here.